والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته After praising Allah and asking Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to his slave and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his family and his companions today's Ramadan message relates to Ramadan as a chance to nurture your soul and to train your soul. The entire of Ramadan is a training program. It's an opportunity to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and an opportunity to cleanse yourself and to cleanse your soul. And in Ramadan, one of the ways that we achieve tazkiyah to nafs, we purify ourselves, is through the actions of leaving that which is prohibited, leaving that which is disliked, and even leaving that which is permissible in order to get nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Certainly successful is the one who purifies it, the nafs, your soul. And the one who dirties it, the one who causes it to be corrupted, that person has certainly lost the one who corrupts it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited us to purify ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى Successful is the person who purifies their soul and remembers the name of their Lord and prays. So the month of Ramadan is an opportunity which is really unique to help to purify and to control the nafs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى And whoever fears standing before their Lord and prevents their soul from its desires, paradise will be their abode. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the one that prevents their soul from its desires. Ramadan, a huge part of Ramadan, is about leaving these things, leaving the shahawat, leaving the desires. And ultimately the destruction of a person comes from one of two things. It either comes from misconceptions and misguidance and false information and false notions or it comes from desires and following them the soul is inclined towards evil the soul is constantly inclined towards evil and Ramadan offers the perfect opportunity to purify that soul already in fasting you are leaving so many of the things that we desire that are permissible for you. Person is leaving their food, leaving their drink, leaving intimacy and so on from the things that people desire. And this in itself gives you a control over your nafs, a control over your soul. And this control over your soul, it extends beyond the things that you left in Ramadan. And also in Ramadan, the extra efforts that we are making to leave bad speech, false witness, lying, arguing, and so on, also give you a control over your soul. And so your soul learns 
to become more obedient. One of the people of knowledge once said that your soul is like a camel. The first time that you force it to sit, it requires a great effort. But once it is sat for you once, for the rest of that journey, it will, it will sit for you. And that is how a person's soul is. It requires training. It requires efforts. And when you leave your food and your drink and the other things which break the fast and you leave off lying and you leave off false witness, and you leave off argumentation and you leave off getting angry and you leave off the sins that have been like the black dots that are placed upon the heart and you cleanse your heart of those in Ramadan and you perform the obligatory actions in terms of a dhikr in terms of a salah, the prayer, in terms of dua, which cleanse the heart, and you turn to Allah seeking His forgiveness and asking for His forgiveness. Allahumma inna ka afuun, tuhibbu afwa fa'fu anna. Oh Allah, you are the one who pardons, always pardoning, and you love to pardon, so pardon us. And we seek the forgiveness of Allah. This cleanses the heart and the heart becomes suitable once again to be filled with obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal and those black marks are cleaned from the heart so the person trains their soul but ultimately what is so important here really is, is two very very important things one is that a person has to strive against their soul and striving against your soul is the hardest form of striving that there is to fight against your soul. And they have to work hard. And they have to work hard to do as many good deeds as they can. Starting with the obligatory deeds and moving on through the voluntary deeds. They have to work hard to turn to Allah in repentance. Repentance is not an easy thing to achieve. It requires feeling sorry for what has passed. It requires stopping what is being done. It requires intention not to do it in the future. It requires making up for the mistakes that were made. So a person strives for that repentance. And a person strives to make changes. And this leads me to the second part, which are long-term changes. Because so many times we train our soul in Ramadan and then like a person who trains their body, and then stops training, they lose that ability after Ramadan because the intention is not there to continue that training and to use that training and put it into practice once the month of Ramadan has finished. So it's really important for a person to seize the opportunity of Ramadan because training the soul, purifying the soul, correcting the soul and repentance are actions for all months of the year, but they are more difficult to do outside of the month of Ramadan. Firstly, because you have these natural desires that are things that are fitriya, they are natural to your nature, and those, when you leave them in Ramadan, like eating and drinking and so on, this gives you a greater degree of patience and control. The second thing is because the shayateen are chained in Ramadan and their influence is reduced. So this provides an opportunity for a person to be able to really look at the influence that their soul is having upon them. Thirdly, your nearness to Allah in the month of Ramadan through dua and through the extra prayers and the extra acts of worship that you're doing and the extra recitation of the Qur'an becomes a, a means which facilitates the purification and the training of the soul. But for a person to really be sincere in this, in all honesty, it's so important that the person sees this as a long-term aim, not something that I'm going to do temporarily and then let myself fall out of shape again and let myself go back to my old ways and my old habits. So this message really is all about a person looking at their soul, a person seeing Ramadan as an opportunity to purify their soul, as an opportunity to cleanse their heart, an opportunity for repentance, an opportunity to change, and to, an opportunity to carry this on beyond the month of Ramadan.
That is what Allah Azza wa Jal made easy for me to mention in this Ramadan message. And Allah knows best. Wassalatu wassalam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ramadan, welcome Holy Lord.